Hello, this is Carl with frugalberry.com. I'm back. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pyrometer based on the YouTube channel My Ford Boy and also modified by Julian HG. Uh, both of them have great channels and I'm going to have uh, links to them in the description of this video. So hopefully what, I've, what I'm coming up with is slightly different from My Ford Boy and slightly different from Julian HG. Uh, I happen to already have uh, some of the materials and uh, let's see how it goes. The parts that I'm going to be using for this build are one, a multimeter that has an input for a K-type thermocouple. A uh, K-type thermocouple that has fiberglass braid on it, a piece of graphite, a stainless steel spring, and this guy here is looks like a piece of all thread but it's actually it has a hole down the center and this is what you get for uh, wiring electric lamps and you can find it in uh, in the box stores I found this one at Menards for uh, I think it was 10 bucks or something like that um, and as you will see um, this gives you plenty of extension so that you can hold on to the one end while you're putting the other end into anything hot and this end that you're holding on to will remain nice and cool. All the parts for this will be linked in the description if you want to order them. This is the K-type thermocouple here. Let me open this guy up. I've actually made one of these already and uh, just as a test. Um, here's the one that I I previously made uh, or used and you can see the end gets pretty burnt on this now if you're not familiar with pyrometers this is used for very high temperature work um, I need this specifically for my furnace for my uh, melting aluminum and copper and brass and all that down and I need to be able to read the temperatures of the inside of the furnace and all that which can get up to uh, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit which I think is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1300 Celsius on that well I'm not sure about that I'll put that in the in the video here anyway let me start by just showing you this this is my multimeter again it has a K type input on it and so right now I've got it on Celsius if I go to Fahrenheit it's reading 77 75 72 whatever degrees okay I put my finger on there and you see the temperature rise of course and that's what it should be doing uh, for those outside of the US there's a Celsius scale and thermocouples are really just two wires, two different types of metal that come together to a point here. And the, right at that point, because it's dissimilar metals, it creates a very, very small voltage. Kind of like the, the potato battery that you've seen in, uh, in different experiments probably. Um, the, the two different types of metals here create a very small voltage which the meter reads and turns into something that we can understand. So what I'm going to be using, doing is using this thermocouple. Now you know if I were to stick this end right into something that was 2000 degrees it would just um, it would be unusable again after that. So because of that we're housing it in this which will uh, protect it a little bit and the spring is going to be on the end of this to give it some uh, rigidity so that it's not likely to to get broken easily and of course this is just to get some extension away from my hand so that I can actually hold the thing so that's the idea we're going to drill a hole into this guy here and mount this to that with a spring 
and then the end of the thermocouple wire will come out the back side here and we'll test it out so all we're going to be doing is taking i think this is an eighth inch drill bit it when i hold it up to the to the wire it's a little bit bigger which is what i want and we're just going to try and drill into this as straight as possible down the center and I'm checking my the angle that I've got this drill going at this graphite is very easy to drill into Let's see, we're we're about there. We'll go a little bit further here. Yeah, I'm gonna call that good there, I think. Alright, so now of course we have all this dust here. Guess I should find something to clean that up real quick. for now so we've got that and I'm going to take a file and just file this side down a little bit make it so it has edges that are a little less sharp All right, so we've got the closed end here, and we've got the whole side here. Now this, let's see if this will fit on here as is. Oh, it does, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do at this point then, let me back up, and we'll take this, and I'm going to run the thermocouple through the other side. There we go. And now, set that over there. I'm going to take this and just kind of thread this on. Out like that that's pretty good there and see if I can find the center of that hole and there it is okay and now I'm going to thread this onto the other side of that spring Good about there. Let's set that there. Just give it some support on the back side. All right. So now we've got our graphite here protecting the tip. And we can just take this end here. Plug it into the meter, power the meter on, and let's bring it back to Fahrenheit, which is what I'm familiar with, showing 86 degrees. I'm sure that's because I was holding that piece of graphite there, 84, yeah, it's going down right now. Okay, so I'm going to stick the end of this in a vise and we're going to put a blowtorch on it and just do the blowtorch test here all right so here we go here's a blowtorch test 
see what happens again we're on the Fahrenheit scale here and it's working and let's see how high we can get this sucker I think we will probably be able to get this to start glowing red It's already starting to glow, glow red here. So as you can see, if we just did this correctly to the end of that thermocouple, it would just disintegrate. But putting it inside that graphite really helps it to, to stay in good shape. It smells pretty good. It smells a little bit like I'm burning incense here. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to be able to get much hotter than that with a propane tank here. But I think that's successfully demonstrated that it does work. And we'll test it live when I melt down some aluminum. So these pyrometers normally sell for hundreds of dollars and we've just taken oh probably twenty dollars worth of parts and made one uh, if you had to buy we've got these uh, uh, I've got this multimeter which is nice and convenient but you can actually buy one of these that actually has two uh, k-type thermocouple inputs into it and it just reads thermocouples and that's it. You can buy one of those for like $20 with the thermocouple wire um, and then you just need the the other parts to make it work. So you know if you were to do this from scratch um, you could do this for probably $30, $40 and save yourself a couple hundred dollars. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.